So now that we have talked about the entropy in physics, let's talk about um, entropy in information science. And instead of thinking about marbles uh, separated in, in different bins, um, let's talk about this uh, in, uh, in the context of a stream of numbers that is arriving. Let's say uh, you're listening um, to the radio and there's a, numbers, a sequence of numbers that arrives. Let's first start with binary numbers. So if we start with, oops, if we start with binary numbers, it can be zeros or ones, um, and there's a probability wh with which a zero or a one could appear. So this is an example of one of those streams of random numbers, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. That's a fairly random looking sequence, okay? Um, of course, if we have the probability for a zero equal to one, then necessarily the probability for a one will have to be zero, or in the other, the other way around, if the probability for zero is zero and the probability for one must be um, one, then of course that random number sequence is entirely predictable. It will either be all zeros or all ones. So one of the things you realize then is if that probability is exactly equal to one, there's no new information in each consecutive value. Um, in contrast to the, the stream that's printed here, um, each additional bit or each additional um, number that arrives gives me more information about the probability distribution if it was all just ones or all just zeros there would be no information that arrives with each bin uh, with each um, number that arrives um, so uh, in particular let's think about the situation where the probability for zero is not exactly zero but is really small so we see mostly ones, except once in a while we see a zero. Now, of course, we'll be very happy to see those zeros because they're very improbable. Um, and so because that probability is very small, that event will have more um, information in kind of a, a heuristic sense, right? That we will be happy to see those improbable events because they will allow us to really determine that probability through uh, uh, counting or frequentist um, statistics. So what we'll do now is try to quantify that idea of information. So we'll introduce this quantity h that encodes the information in the observation of a value x. So we'll have h0 and h1, um, and h0 will be the information enco in, in encoded in seeing an, a 0 arrive, and h1 will be the information encoded in seeing a 1 arrive. Okay. Um, since we already know that smaller probabilities must correspond with larger information content, we want h to be larger for smaller p, um, or we want h of x to be larger for those x which have a smaller p of x. Um, we want the consecutive events that are independent, we want those to have information content that is additive. So if I have first x1 and then x2, then the information content in seeing x1 and x2 must be the sum of the information content of seeing x1 first and then x2. Um, and then the other thing we need to realize, which is related to this, uh, this second um, uh, concept here, is a uh, second property, is that we want, uh, or uh, we don't want this, this is always true, um, the probability of two independent observations, x1 and x2, will be the product of their probabilities. So uh, think about, about a coin toss. All of this we could put in, in terms of a coin toss as well. So head, head, tails, head, tails, head, tails, tails, um, and so on with the probability being um, a half. So the probability of seeing two tails in a row um, is just the product of the probability of seeing the first tail and the product of seeing the second tail. Now based on those three properties we can introduce h of x as the negative log of the probability. And you'll see this works, right? The probability will be between 0 and 1. So that log will be negative. So minus the log will be a positive number. The information content will be a positive number. Um, if the probability is smaller, the log will be a more negative number, a larger negative number. So minus the log will be a more positive number, will be larger. So our information content is larger for smaller probabilities. And then 
it's additive because of our product of probability. So if I have p of x1 and x2, that logarithm will result in getting the sum of the logarithms, so we'll get the sum of our information content. So indeed that works. So this is the information content, little h is the information content encoded in a single observation of x. Each one of those digits in this stream here will have um, its own h. You know, and there's going to be the h of one for that first one. Then there's an h one for the second one. There's an h zero, an h one. Now we can calculate what is the average value or the expectation value of the information content for each of those bits, for each of those um, numbers as they arrive. So how do we calculate that? Well, we just take the sum over all of the possible values of our information content, a little h of x, and we multiply it with our probability. So that gives us the average value of e if the probability is a half for zero and a half for one, then it will just be the average of the little h for zero and the little h for one, okay? And this now is the information entropy in this stream. Um, so that is what we're going to use in our cross entropy loss um, after we massage it a little bit more. Um, so this is really an important concept in information science that we can write um, information entropy for um, a probability, for a, 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 um, a set of numbers that arrives um, with a certain probability distribution. So I've used here the regular log. Of course, this works for any log, 10 log, 2 log, natural log. Um, in the case of information theory, it's common to use the 2 log. Um, we'll probably use the natural log more often in, um, in, in our um, context, but there's actually no big difference. The only thing it does is rescale and, resh and, and shift around um, some of the values. But the minimum for log 2, or the, the, if we take, for example, if we want to find where um, our entropy is minimized, that will be the same um, set of probabilities regardless of whether we use the 2 log, the natural log, or the 10 log. Okay. Um, of course, all of this we can also apply not just to binary numbers, not just to x equals 0 and x equals 1, but we could do this for x equals 0 all the way through 7, so 8 different choices, and we could calculate um, what would be our, uh, our information entropy if each of those um, values of x, each of those eight, eight choices for x has the same probability of 1 over 8. So that's just minus the 2 log of 1 8 and that's 3. Um, minus the 2 log of 1 8 is the 2 log of 8 and 8 is 2 to the third so that's why we find 3 here. Okay. If our probability is not evenly distributed then it will turn out that our um, information entropy is less than 3. Okay, And there's an example here that you can work out um, in, in, uh, as an exercise. We'll get to that. What does this 3 mean? Um, when we, the reason for using the 2 log is actually to turn this number into bits. This is literally the number of bits of information in um, this number x between 0 and 7, the 8 choices. Um, and that makes sense. We know that we can represent each number between 0 and 7 in 3 bits. So, so that's where that 3 bits comes from. Um, if we uh, had um, values between 0 and uh, 15, so um, 16 different choices, and they each had a probability of 1 over 16, then we would find that the information entropy is 4, not 3 because we need four bits to represent um, those numbers. Now what does it mean then if um, our probability is not evenly distributed, if some of those x values are more likely to occur than others? Well, uh, then we'll have less uh, information entropy. And then indeed, it will mean that we can represent those numbers, or those uh, values of x, with, on average, less than three bits. Um, so that is something 
that we can work out in an exercise here. Um, so let's say we have an entropy, uh, we have a stream that has uh, values of x between zero and uh, from zero to seven, and these are the probabilities. So a half for zero, so half the time we'll get a zero, um, a quarter of the time we'll get a one, an eighth of the time we'll get a two, and so on, and then we'll get one over 64 for um, seven, six, five, and four. So if we calculate this uh, entropy, you'll see it's less than three. And then, why is that the case? Well, if this zero appears so often, we can be more efficient in our encoding of zeros. Let's encode it as just a single zero. Okay. Um, what's the next one that is uh, is is, le uh, is what's the next most likely value? It's two. Uh, uh, sorry, it's one, which happens a quarter of the time. So let's encode that as one zero. So zero, one zero, they're uh, um, perfectly distinguishable values. Um, then we can go to three, which is one one zero, four one 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 zero, um, and then five six seven. Um, I missed a the number there. Um, four five six and seven uh, are going to be these sequences of three one. Uh, sorry, here three ones, and then zero 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 one one zero or one one. And um, you, you can uh, stare at that for a while and you'll see that um, it is indeed possible in a stream of numbers to distinguish those, um, th those uh, blocks of, of one, two, three, um, four or five uh, individual numbers. You can indeed distinguish those. So what we can do now is calculate the expectation value of the correct number of bits um, uh, calculate the expectation value of the required number of bits with those probabilities and you should see that that number of bits is exactly the same as the number of bits that you got from your information entropy which means that this is the most efficient way um, of encoding a stream of values of x that has that probability of occurring okay um, so this will likely be something that you will find on the homework assignment. Okay. Um, the other thing that I should mention, uh, even though it doesn't get used all that often, is that we can um, generalize this entropy, information entropy, to continuous distributions just by replacing our sum over x here with um, an integral over x. Right. So this shouldn't surprise you. So now this works for um, for continuous uh, um, distributions continuous probability distribution function okay enough about entropy the only thing we still need to introduce before we can go on to logistic reg regression is a specific um, type of divergence and then we can introduce our loss function which is our uh, cross entropy loss but that's for the next video